Hello, brothers and sisters. I'm just Joe, no title, and I'm so glad you joined me for the Lord's Word of God today. We celebrate Yeshua, Jesus, the one that is and was and is to come, and there is no other master of the universe. Amen? Amen. It's a celebration and a rejoicing that the King has come and gone and will return again. Amen? Amen. Jesus Christ was Son of God by power. He was begotten by the Holy Ghost, not by sex with Mary. Jesus came to redeem man back to God. Jesus Christ was a prophet, a king, a priest, and our mediator. Amen? Amen. So get excited about that. And we know that Jesus Christ is the doctrine and foundation of the kingdom as God, man, and mediator. He's the foundation of the covenant of grace, of eternal salvation, of faith, hope, peace, and joy. His proper deity of his eternal sonship, of his incarnation, messiahship, his obedience, suffering, death, and resurrection from the dead, justified by his righteousness and pardoned by his blood and anointed by his sacrifice. Amen? Amen. And today is a celebration of life and death because Jesus came to die for all those who would accept him, repent, follow him, and receive the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Christmas is a day of giving and receiving. And brothers and sisters, if you want to give, give your life to Jesus and receive wealth from him. Amen? Amen. So brothers and sisters, if you brought your Bibles today, the first passage we'll read is found in the book of Genesis chapter 22. And this is where Abraham is asked by God to sacrifice his only son. And we'll start reading at verse 12. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad, or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And reading verse 18. In your seed all nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. Amen, brothers and sisters. Amen. And all seed means all nations, brothers and sisters. That's what the Word of God says. You see, God knows the future. And he made a covenant with the Jewish nation, the Israelites. But they broke that covenant, which allowed the Gentiles to be grafted in the rest of the nations. Amen? Amen. But he hasn't forgotten the Jews. He loves the Jews. They are his chosen people, and they always will be. Amen? Amen. So now turn with me to the book of Romans chapter 1. We'll start reading verse 1. Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God, with power according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead, now here we see that Jesus Christ is born of the seed of David, which is the seed of Abraham, as the word of God promised, that all nations would be blessed through Abraham's seed. And Jesus was called son of David as king. Jesus was son of God by power. And here it reads, with the power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Remember, brothers and sisters, I start off saying, Christmas is a celebration of the birth of Jesus and the death and resurrection of Jesus so that we could receive the Holy Spirit. For Christ died, was buried, and arose to redeem man back to God. He tells his disciples in the book of John in chapter 16 that it is to their advantage that he goes away. For if he did not go away, the helper would not come. But he tells them that he will depart and he will send him to them. And that is the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. And without the Holy Spirit, we are not saved. No one can be saved without the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Jesus came for the lost sheep of Israel, but they did not accept him. So he turned to the Gentiles to receive salvation. But he has not forgotten about the Jews. They are still his chosen people. And he has selected 144,000 Jews that are in Israel right now that will receive Jesus in their heart, mind, and soul before he comes to separate the sheep from the goats. Amen? Amen. 
So get excited about that. We are close to meeting our maker face to face. So make sure you're ready for that day. Amen? Amen. Jesus gave us the greatest gift of all, and that is the Holy Spirit. Because if you have the Holy Spirit, it is your guarantee that you will have salvation and be with our Lord and Savior in the paradise of heaven for eternity. Amen? Amen. So praise Yeshua. Praise Jesus. Amen? Amen. That's why he came to the earth, brothers and sisters, to save the sinner from condemnation. Because if you do not have the Holy Spirit, you will go to hell where the fire is never quenched and the worm doesn't die, which is the soul, where there's wailing and weeping and gnashing of teeth, never having rest day and night forever and ever. So brothers and sisters, if you're not right with God, get right with him. Some people think that they're going to wait until the church goes up to decide to give their lives to Jesus. Well, brothers and sisters, if you don't go up with the church when he comes to take us home, you're not going to make it. It's like back in Noah's day. When he loaded the boat, God shut the door. So when they were scratching on the door, screaming to let them in, Noah could not open the door because God shut it. And that's what's going to happen when he takes the church up, brothers and sisters, is he's going to shut the door to anyone who wants to repent at that time. It's going to be too late, brothers and sisters. Don't wait to the last minute. It will be too late for you to correct the mistakes you have made. Because, brothers and sisters, he can take you in a hurricane or an earthquake, or you could have a heart attack, or you could just not wake up the next day like the Assyrians did. 2 Kings chapter 19, 35, it reads, And it came to pass on a certain night, that the angel of the Lord went out and killed in the camp of the Syrians 185,000. And when the people arose early in the morning, there were the corpses all dead. So brothers and sisters, if God is tugging on your heart right now to receive salvation, please bow your heads and repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I humbly come before your throne. Dear Father, forgive me for all the sins that I've ever done. And help me to repent and change from these evil ways. And I promise to make changes in my life, Lord, to serve you, please you, and do your will. And when I'm ready, Lord, please fill me up with your Holy Spirit. And write my name in the book of life. And seal me for the day of redemption. And your will always be done, Father, not mine. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, brothers and sisters. And so, brothers and sisters, you made an oath to the Lord to repent from your sinful ways, to change, to make proper changes in your life. And you need to get a Bible. Buy a Bible if you don't have one. And read it every day. It's your spiritual food. If you stop reading the Bible, the body will take over. You need to fellowship at a Christian church. And if you haven't been baptized as an adult, you need to get baptized. It's a proclamation that you believe that Jesus came, incarnated from heaven, died, was buried, and arose for your sins, and you have decided to give your life to the Lord. To follow Jesus. And to follow Jesus is to follow Jesus in obedience. Amen? Amen. And you need to pray. You need to pray every day. Pray in the morning. Ask the Lord to keep evil from you throughout the day. That covers everything. That covers attacks, diseases, accidents. Ask it to lead you out of temptation. And to fill you up with the Holy Spirit every day. And even if you're saved, you should do that. It's like gas going in a car. Some can run out. If the salt loses the flavor, it's good for nothing. That's what the Word of God says, brothers and sisters. And the Word of God is the truth. It cannot lie. And then at night, before you go to bed, ask God for forgiveness for any sins that you did that day. And even ask Him for forgiveness for sins you may have done that you didn't know were sins. Like gossip is a sin. You can do that and not know it. Being a glutton is a sin. You can eat too much and not know it. So always humble yourself to the Lord before you go to sleep 
and ask him to forgive you for your sins. And I thank him for keeping evil from you throughout the day and ask to keep evil from you throughout the night because you never know what can happen. Amen? Amen. And in Acts 2.38, it says to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus and you shall receive the Holy Spirit. And so if you've been baptized or if you get baptized, you are a candidate to receive the Holy Spirit. But it's not until you repent genuinely that you will be filled up with the Holy Spirit. Because when you're a babe in Christ, you don't have the Holy Spirit yet. You have a carnal mind, and a carnal mind cannot serve God. The first step is to have the mind of Christ, and that is to please God and do His will. So seek God with good changes to renew your mind. And when you are ready, God will fill you with His Spirit. Amen? Amen. Don't let the devil in. You need to resist the devil when he tempts you by putting up a barrier, by praying or singing Jesus songs, or reading the Bible. Think of heavenly things, spiritual thoughts. The devil can't stand that and he will flee. And when you have the Holy Spirit in you, you will win against the devil because Jesus has already overcome the devil. So if he tempts you, you rebuke him in the name of Jesus and he will flee. Amen? Amen. So brothers and sisters, God loves you and he will help you in all that you do. And he will always guide and direct your path. He's a God of love and not of anguish. So brothers and sisters, let us continue carrying the cross given to us by taking Christ as our master, our teacher, our example. Believe his doctrine and obey him and we will all be with our Lord and Savior someday for eternity. Amen? Amen.